Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I recently asked my mailing list to send me back things that they are currently dealing with with the narcissist as well as what they think would help them. So what resources would they need in order to help them with those struggles? And so for the next few videos, I'm going to make my way through some of the most common topics and the most common issues that my my subscribers were dealing with. And by the way, if you are not signed up to my mailing list, why not? I send you emails every week with updates and tips on dealing with the narcissist. So you can find the link to do that in the description of this video. I'm going to send you a free communication guide and a little training. It's only 10 minutes to help you communicate with the narcissist better when you subscribe. So one of the things that I was first asked most often is that there is a sense of fear of dealing with a narcissist, fear of trying to enforce the parental uh, agreement or the custody arrangement, fear of trying to, you know, please the narcissist by in, by making the children go with the narcissist during their uh, uh, custody time with them and so forth. So, so basically just fear of even inserting or asserting your rights, your legal rights in a situation with a narcissist, let alone trying to change things up or ask for more things or, you know, go back to court over a certain issue or whatever. And so it puts the, the parent who is, who is the, non-narcissist in a position where they have to not only fight for the things that they've already gotten, right? They've already been legally awarded these things, but also wondering, you know, how do how do we navigate getting more things plus explaining all of this to the kids who may or may not understand what's going on and who may or may not want to participate with what the court has already uh, decided should happen with them and their time sharing and so forth. So First of all, I want to just cover a little bit about fear because I think it's really important that we understand what exactly is happening. And it's not just this thing out there where it's like, I'm just afraid. And it's just this non-descriptive uh, kind of event that's going on that we have to kind of wrestle with and try to manage. So first of all, you know, fear in your body, psychological fear causes fear in your body, right? There's There's a release of of chemicals that go in to help you uh, get out of a situation, activate your fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode, and really triggers you to start operating only on instinct. So it takes away the ability for the cognitive function of deciding what a good decision is in that moment. It takes it away. Okay, that's that. That's how fear operates. When this happens, you need to understand that that there is a biological reason, right? There's a survival instinct that we were all given, and and we we want that to be there, right? Because we want our instincts to keep us alive in times when we are truly in a place where we don't we don't know what might happen to us physically if we didn't have that instinct. So when you can understand that the perceived threat is the same psychologically to you as a real threat. Okay, so so thinking of a tiger chasing you can activate this exact same response as if you were right in front of a tiger that really was chasing you. You need to understand that not all threats are real is really what I'm trying to get at with this. Some fear responses are learned. So some are not instinctual. Some you have... Uh, you have grown up around people who behave a certain type of way, and you have learned to be fearful of certain things, right? Like uh, an easy one to think about is if a mom or dad doesn't like spiders or doesn't like, you know, some kind of a thing, and the child grows up seeing the mom or the dad always reacting in such a way to the spiders, the, the child can learn to be afraid of spiders. They don't have any innate reaction to that thing necessarily, but now they're afraid because they've seen that happening. This is true when it comes to dealing with narcissistic abuse as well, because if you grew up in a household where we don't talk about our feelings, we're conflict adverse, we go along to get along, we don't rock the boat, right? And we just assume everything is working out how it should. And if it didn't work out in your favor, then that's just not how it was supposed to work out. Do you know how many people have have uh, I've worked with who ha who truly believe that they really embody this belief that 
if it was supposed to happen, it would have happened. Because it didn't happen, it wasn't supposed to happen. And I just want you to know you are so in control of your life. Your your behaviors, your actions, your beliefs, your thoughts about your beliefs all change your reality. They all impact your reality. So having an appropriate outlook on what you are dealing with is really important to the outcome of your case, as well as dealing with the day-to-day issues uh, with your children in the household, talking to, communicating with the narcissist and so forth. If you don't have the correct outlook on that, if you think everything is just going to happen how it should, and it doesn't really matter what you do. And I know that it can feel that way, especially if you've, um, been trying so long, but you haven't seen any of the fruit, right? You haven't seen any, uh, real movement in your case or in, in terms of how the narcissist treats the children or deals with you or or communicates to you and so forth, it can it truly feel like this is just nonsense. I'm just not going to get anywhere. But I really want you to remember that some of that belief around that could have come and could could be influenced by your learned behavior, your learned responses to a certain situation. Again, this is why getting completely healed is really important. It's so important. It's the most important thing. I say it again. You are the most important part of your case, especially if you're in court with a narcissist. You are the most important part. When we also think about fear and dealing with a narcissist, we need to take into consideration the social and cultural influences around fear the norms, the behaviors, the the social factors play a significant role in shaping fears. So your values and what you perceive as dangerous or threatening. I encourage people to stop listening to everybody's horror stories of family court when you're about to go into family court. How is that helping you if you don't already, if you're already in a fear mode, you're just asking for more fear. When the only time you should be listening to people's horror stories is if you are truly in the mindset to start planning in advance so that those situations don't happen to you. If you are not in that situation, you need to stop listening to those people and you need to find the the stories of people who have overcome family court and who have gotten exactly what they've asked for. Again, that's another reason why you should join my mailing list. I send out success stories. You'll hear directly from my clients about how their situation and their court situation turned out and what happened in between, right? Because a lot of times we think it's like building like this. It's just this straight incline from where we started to where we want to go, but that's not true. It's up and down all around. And that's why you can't think, oh, I've been doing it for so long, but I haven't seen the outcome. If you quit, if you quit, showing up is 95% of the thing. Showing up correctly is 95% of the thing. If you can continuously do that, you will win your case. So when you understand the social norms, the cultural norms, and how this is influencing you, are you worried about how you're going to look to your coworkers? Are you worried about how you're going to look and and how your family is going to perceive you? These things are influencing the, the atmosphere of fear that you are are walking around with. And this makes it very easy for the narcissist to identify the things that you're afraid of and use them against you. The narcissist will absolutely be doing that. They will do it themselves. They will use their flying monkeys. They will use their attorney, who I've mentioned many times before, is also a narcissist. This is going to be a thing that that is... Uh, an open door, essentially, oh, this door is open. I'm just going to keep walking right on in it, keep using and exploiting that thing until you decide to shut the door. This is absolutely an energetic and spiritual issue. I am unapologetic about saying that. (laughs) I am unapologetic about telling you this is 100% a spiritual battle. You will win or lose no matter what you're doing with the narcissist, in the spirit first. So if you don't understand that there are also generational curses, there are bloodline issues that could be carrying this spirit of fear into your home, into your body, into your bloodline, then it's going to be a lot more difficult because you're going to think, well, I went to therapy and I did the things and I've done all of the stuff that my attorney told me to do. But you're doing the natural things without closing the energetic, the spiritual door to to the reason why the fear is there in the first place. So the fear is already inside and you're trying to close the door 
and you've closed the door maybe, but you, now you're wondering why the fear is still there. Well, the fear is still inside because you didn't address the spiritual root of it. Again, this, this goes back to understanding your behaved, uh, your, your learned behavior, because when you understand, oh, I could have learned that behavior, but I learned it because my, my parents or my auntie or my uncle or my grandparents or whoever were, was operating in a spirit of fear. Right. So when I understand where did that come in for them, I learned this behavior, but where did it start? Where did it originate before that person started doing that? There's a reason. There's always a reason for what what you're seeing around you. You got to follow that down. Fear also has to do with uh, uh, feeling like you need to protect yourself, protect your things, you know, protect your resources. Um, and because you're, I, I have another video where I discuss how we are very loss averse as a species. We do not want to lose. We would rather have five things and keep our five things than take a risk and go get 50 things. Because there's a risk involved in getting more things where I might lose my five things. I don't want to lose my five things. I'm going to hold on to them and I'm going to protect them instead of going on the offensive. You have to understand that this is happening. This happens in the vast majority of cases that I work with my clients on. They become so loss adverse that they they don't even actively uh, protect what they already have. They feel the narcissist has already taken this from them. They've already lost this thing. They've already done this. And so they 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 just want to keep what they have instead of going after not only what they've lost, but going after even more than that, right? What they what they ultimately are deserving of, what their children should be having. They don't go after that because they've lost, they've lost that uh that instinct to go after more things. They become so loss adverse. They become so fearful of losing anything else that they just focus on what they have and they'd rather have their little crumbs than go after the whole cake. And so this is uh, this is something that you have to pay attention to as well, because if you understand, OK, it's my mindset, I'm just I'm just trying to pay, play defense for my five things and just be happy with my five things. And I don't want to go after all of that stuff. Well, then we can get into why that is. Typically, that has to do with uncertainty, a feeling of lack of control, a feeling like the fear of the unknown, right? And when I don't know what will happen, it's like I want to stay where I am, even if where I am is not where I want to be, right? Even if the only way to get to where I am, I've got to take some risks. I don't want to take any risks because I I don't know what might happen out there. I'd rather be comfortable with my five things than be uncomfortable and ultimately get 50 things. So we got to get down to the root of why that's happening. By the way, fear will always come with anxiety. And so if even at listening to this video, if you're finding yourself feeling very anxious about thinking of going back to court or you're thinking about having to, you know, play offense or get more aggressive with your with your legal tactics or whatever, I want you to understand there's that there these things go together. Fear goes with anxiety. Anxiety is a sure sign that you are you have a fear somewhere. And it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to get free of that. Fear is always like a blinking green sign saying, get free. And that's really how I want you to approach feeling fear or feeling anxiety about your case because it's it's nothing but amazingness, really. When you step into that and you're like, okay, this is what it is. You don't have to live with that anymore. And not only that, you can teach your children. You can teach other people about how to truly get free from this spirit. Okay, so I've talked a lot about fear so far, but I want to tell you about what to do if you've you've know that you've been dealing with fear. You don't want to deal with fear anymore. And now it's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to face the fear head on. I'm not going to pretend it's not there. I'm not going to just keep ignoring it. I'm not just going to keep doing, you know, my learned behavior and my normal patterns of behavior. I'm going to start making a difference. What to do with that like gap, right? Because Fear has likely costed you already opportunities, connections, and other kinds of things. So there's stuff that you have lost in between this time of like living in fear and having this awakening of like, okay, I'm living in fear. I need to stop it, right? I want, so I want to just take you through a little exercise right now. Um, I just want you to find a, a quiet spot. You know, if you're listening to me while you're driving, uh, do this when you pull over. But I just want you to close your eyes. Okay, and I want you to visualize this gap. 
I want you to see where you where you were when you were living in fear, when everything was dictated by what the narcissist said or does or their their mood, right? And it really dictated and controlled your life. I want you to see that. And now I want you to envision what you actually want. What is it that you actually want? You have to be specific with this. Your answer cannot be, I just want peace. I just want the narcissist to go away. That's not an answer. Tell me how that looks. How does peace look like to you? How does peace feel like to you? What does the narcissist going away look like to you? You have to be specific with this. Okay. And now I want you to find yourself and position yourself in that in-between space, right? You're holding on to one end of this is the past and one end and this is the future. And now you're in the middle, you're in the present. And what I want you to do is I just want you to imagine pulling the, the past back into you. Make peace with those things that are on the other end of that. Hey, not speaking up for my children, not fighting for justice in my situation. These things are not in harmony with my values. I want to apologize to that version of myself. And I want to say you are welcome here. You are welcome to come back into me. You are welcome to become whole with me once again. And this time I'd like to give you a job. Because I see that you're trying to protect me. I see that you're trying to look out for my children. I see that you're trying to find the path of least resistance for me to get what I want. But it wasn't working. I want to give you a new job. And that job is to find ways to protect this version, the future version, the, the one that I'm holding in my other hand version. I want you to find a way to protect that dream, to protect that vision. And that version of myself and my children and my and my life. And if you're feeling like it, then I want you to ask yourself. I want you to ask that version of yourself that just came back into you that you are now whole with. To give you one thing that you can start doing today. What is one action you can start doing today or one phrase that you can start saying to yourself today or one thing you can start remembering today that this old version of you is no longer going to be controlling your mind, your, your will, your emotions, your decisions, your actions, and instead it's going to start working towards this future. It's going to start protecting that future that you just set up. Maybe for you, this is, you're going to get a phrase that you're going to remember any kind of time that the narcissist texts you or tries to send you something through attorneys or any kind of time that the narcissist tries to interact with you. Maybe there's a phrase that you're going to remember to remind you to be anchored in the present moment and to be focused on the things that you want most, not the things that have happened in the past. Maybe for you, this is sending sending an email or sending a text to the narcissist instead. Maybe for you, this is having a, a more in-depth conversation or a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your children about what is going on, about what they need to be aware of. Maybe for you, it is really diving into the real root of where fear originated in the first place. I want to say this just one more time that. Your problems did not start when the narcissist came into your life. The version you were before the narcissist came into your life will, cannot and will not help you because that version of you let the narcissist into your life. You have to use this as an opportunity to evolve. You have to go much deeper than just who you were right before you met the narcissist because that version of you wanted the narcissist in your life. We need to go deeper into where this originated. And it can feel scary because it can feel like very overwhelming and like all of this work, but actually it's nothing more than just turning on a light in a dark room. Okay, I see you. I acknowledge you. I accept you back into myself. And now I'm giving you a job that's going to help me reach my goals. And that's really how simple it is. If you're interested in walking 
through more in-depth healing like this with me one-on-one, -on -one, I still have a couple of spots open for my one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can find out more on how to sign up for that by clicking the link in the description of this video as well. One final thought on dealing with fear in your home or in your body or in your children uh, before I leave this video is that whenever you see Whenever you see fear, look at how it's coming. Is it coming as chaos? Is it coming as anxiety? Is it coming as, you know, just paralyzed, like I can't make any decision, I can't make any movement forward whatsoever? Pay attention to how it's coming because when you can identify how the fear is coming, you also know what the correct response is. If it's coming as chaos, you need to respond with peace. If it's coming as anxiety, you need to respond with boldness. Right, you need to approach that thing with head on with boldness. You you cannot ignore that thing. So you need to know whatever the thing is coming as. I want you to approach it from the opposite standpoint, and so that's another way that you can uh, really start to make momentum forward towards pushing through this wall of fear that wants to keep you trapped wherever you are. And with that, I will see you in the next video.